we're here with Lily. This is my wife's trail riding mare. Even though that's her main occupation now, we continue to do competition type maneuvers and competition type training with her for two reasons. One is, for whatever reason, when she was formerly in training with somebody else, she found herself getting really stressed. Nothing wrong with the program, but it didn't fit her. She overreacted and she became kind of a nervous, overly forward, anxious horse. So putting her back through some of these things that she found stressful kind of helps. It's like my job gets to be, I'm like the exorcist. You know, I'm going to take some of this out of her. If your horse has some demons, you ignore them at your peril. Instead, look at those demons and deal with them. You know, sometimes the best approach is to look the devil in the eye and send him back to hell where he belongs. So that's what I've been doing with this mare. One of the things that she found stressful was if you asked her to turn around in a spin, she would do it pretty well. But she was stiff, she was worried, she was always having to be sort of held in or set into it instead of just finding it and going with it quietly. One of the things I realized was the whole time she was spinning, say, to the right, which is the direction we'll demonstrate, we're not going to spin her, but we're going to show a building block. So what she was doing the whole time she was going to the right, she was thinking to the left. She wanted to be going anywhere but into that stressful situation. So what I wanted to do was to get her committed to the right direction, or the left, but in this case the right, without putting any stress on her. So what I'll do with a horse like that is I'll throw a lot of rain to him, and I'll ride around, and I don't use much hand at all, just enough to keep them from inverting to the outside when you add the left leg to move them ever so slightly to the right. So we're walking around. You can see how little tension I've got on the rein and how long and loose the rein is. So I'm going to put a little bit of right, or excuse me, left leg on her and see how she looked right, cocked her ear to the right, and moved ever so slightly to the right. Now, what did I do? I quit asking because she gave me what I wanted. I said, thank you, I acknowledge that. I didn't get greedy. Hardest thing in the world to know is when to release and when to quit. We all know, we've all been taught that horses learn on the release. Then that puts the burden on us to know when to give that release or the whole process really has it has no effectiveness if we're releasing at the wrong time or incompletely or constantly. I remember helping a lady out at a little clinic that we put on every year. And she said, well, I, I've been using this whole idea of release and my horse just doesn't seem to get it. And I said, well, the problem is his whole life is release. You never put any pressure on him. So when you release him, it's just an, another day in the life. So you have to ask them to do something that they find to be pressure. And this mare is so sensitive, and I really like to have a horse this sensitive, to where when I put a slight amount of left leg on her, she conceives, she believes that to be pressure, and she moves herself in. And each time should be a little easier. Now, I'm gonna tip her nose, and then not hang on her face, but she's just showing a little tendency to look to the outside. And I just don't want her to react to my leg by curling around to the left. I'm gonna put a little left leg in her. See how she came around? It's very subtle. This is the dull and boring stuff that builds a horse and probably loses viewers on a video because I could be spurring her in the belly and turning around 9-0 and say, now nah, I'll get that better the next time and then It'd be as good as watching a rodeo. Problem is, I would rather build my horse than please myself or maybe make a more exciting video. 
Plus, every so often some exciting stuff happens and you never know when it's going to crop up. So I'm going to put a little left leg on her. Little left leg on her. There, see her coming around and I ask her for just that little bit more this time because she's ready. This time I'm going to be able to put a little left leg on. Say, Lily, can you step around just a little more? Just let's see her right ear coming back to me. A little more. There. What I'm getting, and this is so important to me, is all response and no resistance. No stress, all response, no resistance. You're getting her going right and thinking right. I'm going to put a little left leg on. Little left leg. Little left leg. Little left leg. Little left leg. And there you go. She offered me a present there. She said, well, you're steering me. Your leg is in the move my shoulder position. I'm going around to the right. You're asking my shoulder to move to the right. So I'm just going to move my shoulder and step around. Now, in her horse mind, she didn't think, oh, I'm going to turn around, because then she'd have a little meltdown. She just said, well, you want me to move my shoulder over? I can do that. And it's not going to hurt. It's not going to stress me. It's not going to be more than I can handle. So you just put that little bit of left leg on. And there you go. The goal here is to not be dragging your horse into the circle, not be restraining them into that right-hand direction, but to have them find it, to have them offer it to you, to have your mind and theirs on the same page. And that's just a very good feeling. Now, I'm not promoting that as the way you teach a horse to spin or how a horse should spin because she's kind of kind of a little long and a little loose, that's okay. Because what I'm getting from her is exactly what I want. Commitment to go right, commitment to move her shoulders over, and commitment to do it with a little bit of effort. Not just floundering around thinking, well, you know, I'm half-hearted. This mare doesn't do anything half-heartedly. Her problem is she tries too hard. I've never been able to hate a person or a horse for trying too hard. But sometimes they need a little reassurance Sometimes they need a little rebuilding, and that's really what we're doing with her. Now, that's the directional side. I'm going to show you something that I don't have a title for, uh, and I'm not sure it's even something that's worth seeing, but it's something I do, and I wanted to share it. A few years back, I had a little bitty mare, way too small for me, except her heart was bigger than any horse I think I've ever had almost. And my cover story was I was getting her ready for my daughter to show, and she did show her, and she showed her very successfully. But I managed to hijack her and show her from time to time, and I, I just loved her. So I made a habit, because this mare would try so hard. When I'd come out of the show pen, I wouldn't ride her out. I'd step off and lead her out. And I had the habit of just putting my hand on her neck like this. And a friend of mine watched me come out. He said, you know... You look like a fellow walking his girlfriend home after a date. And I thought to myself, kind of feels that way. And I kind of got in the habit after a session with a horse. If I'm walking to the barn, I'll take this mare and I'll put my hand on her head and I'll say, you know, this wasn't a bad thing we did today and you were, you were a pretty nice pony. And let's just walk out of here like two old friends. You know, when you do that with your horse, what you learn a little about is how they feel about you. Because I've had some horses, I put my hand up there, they come over into me. Other horses, they outwalk me. Other horses throw their heads up. But the ones that you're sort of simpatico with, they do this. And we've made three videos this morning this is the end of the session, and I feel like she was good, and she feels like it wasn't a bad deal. And so we're just finishing up the session with this frame of mind, 
and I think it makes her happy to do it, and it makes me happy to be able to do it. So for whatever it's worth, most of what we do in training horses takes place right in here and right in here. The rest of what we have is just in service of this mind and that mind getting together. And when your horse sort of melts like that, wants to be with you, it's not making a pet of them. It's not trying to bribe them with anything. It's just you're in a good space. It's a good feeling. So that was just a little self-indulgence on my part to show something that makes me feel good. And I bet if you do that with your horse and they like it and you don't have them walking over you or you don't have them pulling away, they'll start to feel good to you too. Thanks.